Hi, I'm Kite Girl, Annabelle Drum. Thanks for visiting. Today we're going to be interviewing Francis Evans, who's an NLP coach, an avatar trainer, but he's also a channeler. And not everybody knows what channeling is, so I thought today we would talk to him about channeling and how that works, and also talk to the voice that he channels, which is Mercredan. Now, if you follow my blog, you will find that Mercredan's lessons are peppered all the way through. I've been doing sessions with Mercredan since November 2011, um, so I have learned a huge amount from him with regards to human behavior, um, past life stories that help you understand how people behave now, as well as this great world shift in consciousness that we are going through right now too. So I thought the first thing that we could do was talk to Francis himself and let you get to see what he looks like normally and then go through a little mini session with Mercredan so you can see how he goes into it and comes back out of it again, what he sounds like, what sort of questions you can ask him, all those kind of things if you're not quite sure how channelers work. So let's get started. Hello Francis, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Annabelle, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, you've got a number of services that you do for clients. Could you tell us a little bit about those? Right. Well, I've been a, a psychotherapist in the in the general term for uh, since 1980, mm -hmm. and so I trained in uh, all sorts of things: hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming, and all this sort of stuff. And when I first began practicing, I started out as an astrologer too. So I just, what I've done is I packaged all this stuff up together. So in terms of coaching, come therapy, um, whatever, I, I look at it in terms of ast the astrological counseling as well as interventions. So my, I suppose my basic skill, what I call it, is, is pretty much associated with the work of Milton Erickson in what he called uncommon therapy. Hmm. So that's more or less what I do, and I do it both in Skype uh, and sometimes in emails and one-to-one -one in Auckland or wherever. Right, okay. And how did you get into channeling? Um, in, I got into channeling. Well, it was taught channeling, although I didn't know it at the time that was what it was called. I was taught how to meditate mm -hmm. by uh, with what it would probably be called a spiritualist church. Uh, and I was taught by a woman who was Scott. She'd been, a, she'd been psychic all her life. She'd been what they call fae in, in, uh, in Scotland, which mm -hmm. is open. And four years old, she was giving them messages. So she oh, wow. taught a whole group of us, a whole group in the, in the, in the days of the hippies, you know, how to meditate, but her way of meditating was you sort of basically opened your mind and when something came in, you spoke it exactly as you were given it. Wow. So I learned how to do this, and then as I learned hypnosis and self-hypnosis and all these other things, suddenly it started to become more and more aligned to that. And was Mercredan the first voice that you received? Uh, no, the first uh, the first voice that I had was when, was when we were in this in this little circle group, uh, and I was told uh, the voice that came in said you have to say Mary had a little lamb, and I went stop that I'm not doing that. <laughs> but for weeks and weeks I resisted this voice kept saying the same thing every week the same thing until I got to the point of going well it's never going to change if I don't say it. So I just said this and it was like that was the key to it. And then for years I channeled another uh, voice which was a character called Isba, who claims, uh, and I have no idea about that, whether it's true or not, but he claims to uh, have been a teacher in a past life of mine. Oh, I see. So, and I, ch and I channeled Isba for probably 15 years, and right. then one day it went completely, and Mercredan came through. So did it feel different to you? It was completely different. Was it so you knew, it, you knew it was a different person? Oh, I absolutely knew it was a different... Not a person, a, but a different entity. Yeah, different manifestation completely. 
Right. And what do you do when you're channeling? Are you listening in to what's going on? Uh, no. What happens is I go into this very deep place uh, and hand over. So in a sense, uh, I cease to exist as a personality. I give myself the chance of not existing. And that's the thing that I've taught people how to channel. You know, I've done lots of channeling workshops and they get to a certain place and they can do it. And then when you say, no, stop being anybody, <laughs> people lose it. They don't like the... It's the great the amount idea. of trust that you'd need, isn't it? The total trust. And, yeah. and one of the things that also happens is people often say, oh, when you're channeling, you've got to protect yourself. And I go, yeah. I have never protect myself because... Uh, from what I don't create, there's nothing out there that is actually going to get me unless I've put it there previously. So right, because I wondered when you get people that are scared of when they watch a channeler and they say, oh, the devil's in them. Is it possible to get a bad entity coming through? Because some uh, of them I don't sound very I, wise to me. Oh, I think that uh, uh, you know, the other levels I've seen people go quite mad, quite they do bad, their behavior is insane behavior, and they're being told to do by, I would say, mischievous people. <laughs> they are, you know, you, you channel to the degree that you are aware. So if you, if you think that you uh, suddenly are taken over and being, you know, open to the highest being and you've never done anything in your life, I doubt it. You know, I've always said, my gift is that I am the most skeptical of myself. You know, I was you've got to remember I was trained, brought up as a scientist. Right. Science. So I've always gone, well, this is weird. But what we have to do is take away where it comes from and simply look at the message and analyze the message. And is there anything that resonates? with us is this sound like it's useful right. because i don't care how truthful it is if it's not useful yeah i i totally agree some and sometimes you'll get um like for example when you see the lady who channels who used to channel seth s-e-t-h yep. and the voice was so weird that it would freak people out uh and they, then they stopped listening to what the message was. They were so worried about how it sounds. And, and in, indeed, when you go into, when Mercury Dan comes through you, it's a very different personality and there's, you know, different yep. little things that happen. So, um, And yeah. often it uses a different language. I mean, words yeah. that I wouldn't myself choose, he chooses to use them. And, and what I've learned over, you know, it's probably what, I started Mercury Dan probably came for around about 1990. Okay. For a long time. Uh, and I noticed that, um, that the way it came through, you know, he used different, um, the words that he used were, were very specific. So he would, he would say a word and then a little later on he'd break it down into a component parts and say, look, I'm not talking about the normal use of the word. I'm talking right. about real use of the word as it as it is structured. Right. I, mean, I think yeah. I think Abraham does that too through Esther Hicks. Um, appears to make up new words that, when you look at them objectively, they they make perfect sense. Yeah. So you do sessions for anybody, really, don't you? I do. Hopefully sessions. not the ones that are going to harm you, but. Um, <laughs> Only the curious well, ones that want to learn. I I just do, uh, you know, for anyone, but I don't guarantee, because I've found that what Mercudan has done, is, so for some people, he will challenge them on the things that they that they need to challenge on. So they are very different sessions. You know, he chooses how he addresses anybody, from what I gather, because... Remember, when I come back from a session, I have no idea mm. what has been said, only how the person... Only the look on their face. <laughs> only the look on their face. The, and, you know, sometimes people can be extraordinarily emotional. Yeah. I've had a few of those challenging sessions, and they're that, that, but they're so uh, useful. If you're brave enough to face up to them that 
you you develop inside um, a lot, a lot more than any other teacher can give you here on earth. And so, also, mm-hmm. yeah, answers really deep questions. You know, I mean, yeah. sometimes he will bring up uh, people who who are long gone in your life, but had a huge impact, mm. and that draws up all sorts of emotional things. Uh, and as you know, we, because we record all the sessions, and I, it's always been, you know, like I was told right at the beginning that when you record a session, you leave three or four days before listening to it because yes. it takes that time to integrate what you've already got. Yes, that's right. But the other thing about it, which is pretty interesting, is that whether you're in the room or in Skype or whatever, uh, is that there's an energy that comes through this that that is, it is not normal. You know, it's, it's like... That, it's, that's not kooky. I mean, it's good stuff. It's all good. It's, yeah, it's like there's a, you know, like there's an uplifting mm. thing. People have often asked me, well, do you, do you get drained by it? And I've always said, no, I always get energized by it. It does take a little bit of time to reorient myself back into the physical body at the end of it, yeah. but it does energize. Right. You so know, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, we'd love to do a quick session with Mercury Dan just to, so that the viewers can see how it works and what it would look like as you go in and when Mercury Dan speaks and you come back out again. Are you willing to do that? Very willing to do that. Fantastic. Um, we perhaps should explain a few things. One okay. of the things that I do is I'm very clear that I don't want to be taken over by things when I'm not uh, in charge about it. So what I do is I have a contextual marker. So I use, in mostly I have uh, some sort of cloth that I put around my shoulders. Yep. It's simply a marker that says, all right, this is, we are, we are preparing to go into this different state of being, uh, and I am choosing to be willing. I'm not going to be doing this when something else from the outside thinks that I should. Okay. I'm very. So I, and I believe that is one of the most important things in the whole nature of channel is that you don't allow yourselves to be taken over. Mm. Because then, you know, you know exactly what's coming through. You know the feel of it. You mm. know how, how, how the sense of it. You know whether it's the right thing or something else. Right. Great way to keep control of the body. So I'll just go into that ritual. Okay. Give us a few seconds. Okay. Good afternoon. Once again, it is my privilege and pleasure to come and spend these few moments of your time. So often, the majority of people are accessing deeper levels of consciousness and in the main shall we say, reject what is being given because they cannot understand from where it emerges. So then... We have many who, shall we also say, project over the top of what is actually being said to align it with their existing beliefs about the nature of 
the inner world and spirit. Yeah. There is in our best guidance, shall we say, the most important quality to develop is that of obedience. In that sense, then, obedience is not changing anything. One is given the information as such in a certain way, and it must be delivered in exactly that way. Then one develops a degree that is perhaps the most important quality to develop in anybody's life. That is the quality of discipline. Because in your world, you most often rely upon disciplinarians, that is external. So then you are forever, shall we say, breaking the rules in order to be dragged back on the path. Yet the truly wise mm, develop self-discipline mm, to become disciples mm, to higher principles. Mm. I think that is mm, a good beginning. I think so too. Thank you for that, Macridan. I am doing a short recording today for the viewers so that they can see how you work with our dear friend. And um, I'm wondering if you could tell us how it was that you came to choose our dear friend to come through. I want to say, first of all, one has to recognize that consciousness is not a being as such, is not a single entity or anything at all. My dear friend simply developed the ability mm, to mm, access, shall we call it, mm, the higher records mm, through a uh, ability to mm, be obedient to what was given. Mm. So he then becomes mm, a translator mm, as much as anything else, mm, a translator of the higher courts. Let us give an example. If you are being mm, tried mm, in a court of law in which mm, a country you do not speak the language, then the court provides a translator. Mm -hmm. The translator simply tells the judge and the court what you are saying and translates back what the responses are. They do not add their opinions to either side of that argument, otherwise justice is not mm, mm, being done, nor is it being seen to be done. Mm, yes. so my dear friend is simply a translator in, in the higher courts. Right. Okay. And um, now the obedience right. sounds to well, me... I to say this. Oh, yes. The name that we have chosen is yes. simply given as, shall we say, an address that is 
a position to take in which, shall we say, if one is being engaged as a translator, one needs to find one's bathroom. So yes. then, <laughs> they are talking as if this is part room number two. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that is your address. You know where you are. Now you can go about your business. So mm. it is that anybody can answer. And in, shall we say, asking their question, it provides, shall we say, a ripple at a certain frequency in consciousness and as such mm. returns mm. its conducive ripple back to be translated. Right. I understand that. Is there anything um, that you can tell us? You and I had a session just a few days ago, which I have given the viewers in my blog. Is there any more that you can um, tell us, a, a message that's more up to date now that tells us where we stand and what we can expect over the next few weeks. Let us say this everything is always in flux at this time because, as time, as you understand, it speeds up and one can simply realize that the beginning of this year is only, shall we say, a few months old. You understand? Yet you are really at the end. Time then has sped up to such a degree that everything is realigning for that point, if you like, when it comes to a stop. to a standstill and then one has always to take stock before that occurs one needs to put one's house in order right shall we say, get rid as, of as much that is holding you back as possible. Mm. Old then is over. The old way of thinking is almost done. New mm, concepts, new mm, research, new ideas will transform the way that society as you know it, that is the global family, conducts itself. And such is the place that one still stands on the edge of whether the transformation will be peaceful or whether it will be disharmonious. Mm. One considers the world as such in its present state, one can only arrive at the conclusion that unless humanity takes a position with itself, peace is less 
likely to occur. Not impossible, but less likely because reality conforms to consciousness. And while there are many people who think consciousness is evolving, and to a degree that is true, there is much more that is holding it back. Mm. Too many people want to continue the old system, yes. structures, and the old structures are outdated mm. and no longer serve the wider pathway of humanity. Yes. Then you are, shall we say, clumping together for a major change in attitudes. Yes. And so keeping our house in order, as you say, and we're not talking about furniture here, everybody. We're talking about your own internal house. <laughs> um, uh, is there a, uh, what would be the first thing that you would suggest if you gave us one one step today that would be the first step to take to get our internal house in order? What is most important is to develop forgiveness and compassion. Mm. Those have always been the greatest thing that hold on back. Mm. So many people try to um, overturn their childhood griefs and um, such um, angers and so on, everything that happened, um, and try to gain back their sense of self. Um, whereas um, releasing um, that um, to the past and um, recognizing people do what best they can. Exactly, yes. In doing so, all one can give is compassion because if one does not give compassion, then you are compelled to experience the same yourself. You mean, do you mean repeated? Of course. Yes. Not only repeated, but the other side of quick. And that mm. has your experiences over many lifetimes, but the shift in consciousness opens up a new dimension of being, and that is what is most important. So much technology is able to perceive this. Mm. Now, so many are awakening the Possibilities. Yes. Use of such gifts can bring greater, shall we say, disruptions than is best thought. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Mercredan. That's been a lovely little lesson. It's a pleasure I to have you here. To say it is important mm. at this moment in time mm. that mm. each person mm. reviews what it is mm. that mm. is uppermost in their mind, mm. Mm -hmm. because that mm, is the leakage mm. where one's reality does not develop in line with the wider, shall we say, well-being 
of your planet, your society. And as I pointed out, this is a climate issue. Your environmental impact, it is climate. It is not just on the external, but the internal climate of consciousness needs to be redressed. Indeed Thank it does. Your time for your interest and let us bless those that listen because a blessing is sending, shall we say, a message to the heart and soul to come fears of the mind. Thank you and good afternoon. Beautiful. Thank you. Need some water? I've had, I've had a drop of water. And there you are again. Yeah, and water's good for grounding and coming back, sort of flushes out. And right, we are sort of mostly there. There we are. So thank you very much for doing that, Francis. That was really, really helpful. I think it's useful for people to see. And, um, I think it might be quite good if uh, anybody's interested in sending in questions um, that we can always do another quick session again if you've got a question you want to ask Mercury Dan. Um, That's right. Or, or I even, uh, I'm even offering, you know, people want to send emails. Uh, to, uh, you know, as long as they don't get overwhelmed with it, I would like to answer back to some of those. Okay. Great. Oh, good. Thank you very much, Francis. That's great. Thank you and we'll talk to you later. Okay.